government steps up action to fight crime. That's our top story in your Barbados Today Wednesday afternoon news update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In another three weeks, Attorney General Israel Brathwaite will be tabling a raft of legislation to stem rising crime. He made the revelation this morning at the start of a national consultation on violence hosted by the Criminal Justice Research and Planning Unit at the Lloyd Erskine Sandifer Center. Our Ryan Jills has the story. The Attorney General told stakeholders that in the coming weeks, anti-gang legislation will be coming before Parliament and it will give more sentencing power to the judiciary. Mr. Brathbert, in giving a sneak peek, said it contained provisions whereby a gang member, whether male or female, who was found guilty of being in a gang, would receive no less than 20 years in prison. He says leaders of gangs, in turn, will receive a maximum of 25 years. Also on the card, the AG and Minister of Home Affairs says are a new firearms bill and a civil asset forfeiture regime. They will be going before Parliament early next month. In addition, amendments to the Police Act, which will widen the power of lawmen to stop and search, and an amendment to bail to prevent bail being granted for a period of 18 months where the offence charge included the use of firearms is also being prepared. Braffitt said he hoped that these measures should send a signal to the criminal element that government has zero tolerance to crime. From the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium for Barbados Today, I'm Ryan Jilt. In other news this Wednesday, leader of the United Progressive Party, Lynette Eastman, is calling on Commerce Minister Donville Innes to give account of his stewardship. She charged that he must shoulder some of the blame for the hardship Barbadians are facing while addressing a political meeting in Hainesville last night to present the UPP's candidate for St. James South, Crystal Austin. According to Eastman, the productive sectors, which include manufacturing, small business and international business, which fall under his portfolio, are not performing and that's why government has resorted to onerous taxes. That is why the government has to carry up the taxes. That is why you will pay more taxes. That is why that has gone from 15% to 17.5%. And they told you that that was a temporary measure, but that is a big lie. And right now I tell you a big lie, but that, that alone is enough to pop the law. That is why they introduced a solid grace tax. They didn't work good, and then they take it off. That is why they introduced a national social responsibility levy. Some people call it a starvation levy. Eastman also criticized government's handling of the tourism sector, saying it was not maximizing earning potential of the industry. She also vented her concerns that government was missing out on valuable foreign exchange because it granted concessions to a leading hotel chain. So you have a hotel operating in Barbados that can put us on CNN but don't pay any taxes. We, the people of Barbados, we have to support all of the street lights that they are using, all of the roads that they are using, everything that the taxpayers have to pay for, we pay for it. And you have a big able hotel that can advertise on CNN and, 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 and everything else. They're not paying a single cent. That cannot be right. And you cannot put back a government or the MP for this area back in power who would agree to do something like that. In other news, police are searching for a St. Philip man who has been missing since last month. 29-year-old Raymond Beckles was last seen by his mother Mary Absalon three weeks ago in the Sixth Rose St. Philip area. Beckles is of dark complexion and is about 5 feet 4 inches tall. He has a round face, a broad nose, staring eyes and small ears which are pierced. Beckles is known to frequent the Sixth Rose St. Philip area. Anyone with information about the whereabouts of Raymond Beckles is asked to contact the District C Police Station at 416-8200 or 416-8201.
Police Emergency at 211, Crime Stoppers at 1-800-8477 or the nearest police station. To regional developments now, in its recent budget, the Trinidad and Tobago government raised taxes on cars to dampen the appetite of some citizens who use tax breaks to buy high-end vehicles. But the TV6 News investigation reveals that politicians have been buying tax-free luxury cars that have cost the state nearly $30 million. The plush seats and slick dashboard of a Mercedes-Benz, the sleek exterior of the Toyota Prado, the best comfort money can buy, and for parliamentarians, it comes tax-free. Parliamentarians have collectively saved millions in taxes on their personal luxury vehicles thanks to exemptions. Yet the government is clamping down on others who used legitimate tax breaks to do the same. Individuals have taken advantage of the tax waivers on hybrids to import luxury vehicles. This has caused a significant leakage of tax revenue. And government is raising taxes on certain cars. To encourage the use of smaller, more fuel efficient vehicles and to reduce the loss of foreign exchange for motor vehicle imports, I propose to increase by 25% the motor vehicle tax and customs duty on private passenger vehicles with engine sizes exceeding 1599 cc's and not exceeding 1999 cc's. The head of the Foreign Used Car Dealers Association says that tax will raise prices on cars working people can afford. Like they would buy like a Nissan Serena, like a X-Trail, like a Toyota Voxy and a Toyota Noah. These are people working taxi. But as government asks people to dig deeper into their pockets, should parliamentarians rein in the tax breaks on their own cars? All parliamentarians receive tax exemptions on customs duty, motor vehicle tax and VAT. It's part of their benefits package set by the Salaries Review Commission and it's been standard practice for about two decades. But a TV6 News investigation found that parliamentarians have been milking these tax allowances, using them to buy multiple luxury vehicles. And when the SRC tried to clamp down on these runaway exemptions three years ago, parliamentarians rejected the move, preferring to keep the tax breaks unlimited. In many cases, the allowances are so hefty, they save parliamentarians half the retail price on a car. On the international scene, India's Supreme Court has struck down a legal clause that permits men to have sex with their underage wives. The clause, which was part of India's law on rape, said intercourse between a man and his wife was permissible as long as she was over 15 years of age. Now, the legal age of consent and marriage in India is 18, but marital rape is not considered an offence. The verdict has been hailed by women's rights activists, but some say the order will be difficult to enforce. The judgment said that girls under 18 would be able to charge their husbands with rape as long as they complained within one year of being forced to have sexual relations. Under that news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadostoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. Now, we are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as the Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.